guys so I know my voice is a little bit raspy is because it's really early in the morning so please forgive me for that so to start just make sure you flip your sweater inside out then you're going to insert the inside of your embroidery hoop and the middle of the sweater then you're going to put the top piece on and make sure that you're tugging at the sweater so everything that's inside of the embroidery hoop is a little tight Once you get everything pretty snug, you're going to take your flathead screwdriver and just tighten the embroidery hoop as tight as you can. So I'm going to be showing you a few techniques all throughout the video. Um, so here I'm just loading the yarn into the punch needle this is a tiny punch needle so what I'm doing here is taking the yarn and pulling it through the threader it's shown here as two pieces of yarn which I doubled it but then I went back and changed my mind and I singled it so you put the, th the yarn through the threader and then you're gonna pull it through the punch needle all the way out and then you'll see me insert it into the hole and pulling that through then I'm gonna release the yarn from the threader and my small punch needle will now be threaded. Okay, so you're gonna pull the needle through the sweater and make sure that the excess yarn is hanging at the bottom. Then you're just gonna punch through the sweater um, going over the fabric so you can see here and I'm gonna zoom in in a minute I'm just punching through and then whatever direction that you're going you're just gonna rotate the embroidery hoop and make sure that the pointy side is always in the direction that you're going as you can see here so remember in the beginning when I told you to flip the sweater inside out it's because when you do a punch needle the loops are going to be on the opposite side. So here I'm just showing you the loops will be at the front of the sweater. So for the next technique, I'm just going to use some wool. So I'm going to pull the wool through the threader and then I'm going to thread my big needle. Make sure that the needle is big enough. Um, you just want to make sure so that the wool can go through. And just be very delicate because the wool it's really it's kind of like cotton when you pull it it just tears away so just be very delicate when working with this material so you'll see me going back and forth with the sweater, so I'm doing some designs on the back of the sweater and other designs on the front of the sweater since I'm using different techniques. So now we're at the front of the sweater, so I'm bringing the needle up and I'm just gonna pull the wool through. Again, be very gentle with this because this wool is very delicate. So you can just follow what I'm doing here. It's easier if you watch and just follow. So with the wool, I'm going to create a knotting technique. Um, you see me pulling the needle out from the thread? Don't do that. Just keep it threaded. I was really indecisive. I had no idea what I was going to do. So I took the needle out, but you'll keep it threaded to create the knotting technique. You can knot it while the needle is still threaded.
So for the next technique, we're going to use an adjustable punch needle. So the way you thread it is the same as you threaded the first punch needle. The only difference is you will need to use an embroidery needle, which is this long needle here, um, to thread it through because the threader will not go through the punch needle because it's shorter. So you just thread the yarn through the embroidery needle as I'm doing here and then you're going to pull that straight through the punch needle and it makes it easier so the thread can come right out. So you pull it through and then you'll pull it through the hole just like you did with the first one. So the coolest thing about this punch needle is that it's adjustable. It has A, B, C, and D. A, which is the longest, creates longer loops. And as you go down B, C, and D, the loops get smaller. But since I already showed you the looping technique, I wanted to show you the other technique. So in the first one, we flipped the sweater inside out. Now, when you see in the next clip, the sweater is going to be right side up. And this is just creating like a stitching technique. So the loops would be at the bottom. I don't want the loops shown with this color. So that's why I'm showing you this next technique. So this is pretty universal. You can do a looping technique or a stitching technique, which is really cool. So I'm gonna be showing you a few other techniques um, throughout the video. This is just creating stitches, so if you watch what I'm doing, it's easier to actually follow. I'm bringing the stitches up, and then I'm bringing the stitches back through, and then you're going to pull it right next to the previous stitch. Sorry if it's a little confusing. It's pretty easier as you see me doing it. Um, and what I'm doing here now is that knotting technique. The same technique that I did with the wool, but I'm just doing it with the embroidery thread. And what I did is, I think I quadrupled the embroidery thread so it could be really thick. So most of the techniques are going to be done on the right side of the sweater. The only time that I flip the sweater on the back side is when I'm creating the loops. So when I'm using the punch needle and I'm creating the loops and I want the loops to be at the front of the sweater, that's when I'm going to punch with the back facing up. And when I'm creating the stitching with the punch needle, that's when the shirt is going to be facing the correct side. And for this next technique, I took two pieces of wool, a black and a white, and then I twisted it. I created a long twist um, and then I'm just pulling it through and I'm creating like a cable stitch, I think is what it's called, but I don't double it. I just do it on one way. So again, if you watch, it'll be easier than me explaining. I'm sorry if I'm confusing anyone. Since I doubled it, it's going to be real hard to pull it through, especially because it's a sweater, but don't worry, it's not going to rip the sweater. Just try to pull it through as easy as you can. So just continue watching the rest of the video. I'm going to shut up now <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoy.
as you can see, some loops are small and some loops are longer. That's because I used the adjustable punch needle. And that's exactly what I was trying to show you. When you use the longest one, which is A, the loop to be longer. And then when you go all the way down to D, the loop to be shorter. And yeah, I just love how it came out. It looks so nice and everything is very random. Um, if you wanted to, you could have drawn in the back of the sweater any shapes or anything that you wanted and then you can be able to stitch it but do it how I did it just create it randomly and everything will come out really nice